thought this time around I'd do a project that doesn't involve mains voltage. And since we all have USB phone chargers, we always have a spare one from an old phone. It's USB, so it's 5 volts and safe for everybody to work on. A simple USB powered automatic wardrobe light. Lights, micro switch. Now, if we close the door, lights go off. Open the door, lights go on. Door opens, light is on. Door closes, light automatically goes off. Simple. So Here's our LED tape, the USB powered type. What we'll have to do is we'll have to extend it. So we'll break the connection here and then we'll end up with USB plug. And um, we, we just cut it and we, we strip the ends because we, what we want to do is we want to extend it. Of course, if you don't feel like soldering, you can always just use a connector block. I just think it makes a nice neat joint if it's soldered, but a connected block is just fine. Okay, the joint looks good. Now, I don't know if you know this, <clears throat> I have staggered the joints so that the connections don't touch. In theory, if you neatly stagger them, you could pop your heat shrink, heat shrink sleeving over like that and just shrink it and they won't touch. And if you don't feel 100% about doing that, you can take your um, hot melt glue gun and just put the tiniest dot of hot melt glue in between there. And that'll just keep them separated nicely. I said this is only five volts so there's no electric shock risk here it's simply just to, to keep it working and safe take the lighter pass it through there and it's all shrunk down give it a good squeeze it's a fairly nice joint there's little solder tabs all along and there's cut marks as well so it can be cut on these points here to length but you have to cut it on on these points here that's the cut point where it says let me zoom in so you can see sometimes they have a little scissor marks there these this tape doesn't have it um, but whenever you see the two dots together like that there's a line there that's where it can be cut but it can't be cut anywhere else you can take your bit of uh, speaker flex or any other small thin cable it's only five volts so we're just turning these wires here a bit solder over them. We'll do the same with the 5 volt LED strip. Pretend these contacts here. You can see that the tape is indicated with um, positive and negative so I've tacked the red wire to the positive. Check if there's no bridge between the two. That looks pretty good. USB 5 volt source. Let's plug it in and see what happens. There we go, it lights. If you were to cut this wire, say more or less here, LEDs go off. So that makes it pretty clear where we have to connect the switch. Now, you can use any micro switch. This one has a very long extension pedal. I've curved the tip a bit so that when it hits the door, 
it slides along the door nicely. You can use a smaller one like this, which will make it more discreet. But bear in mind that the door won't would have to press it a very small amount. Whereas this one, there's more travel, so it's easier for the door to trigger the switch. But then it's it's bigger and chunkier. It might not look as pretty. I personally believe that these contacts are really big. You could just put spade terminals, crimp terminals on, on them. What I've done is I've cut them down with the side cutters, just to little stubs, and um, literally just soldered the wire straight onto them. And uh, I left it bare since it's only five volts and it's only powering a few milliamps on an LED. And I think it'll it'll just look a bit neater. If this was mains operated, this would have to be in its own protective case, so your prying fingers couldn't get in. All the switch does is break that connection. So if we connect that in there, like so. So you can do this once again using a connector block, like that. But I'm going to solder it because I think it's going to make a nice neat joint. If we get our lengths just right, we can tee that in very pretty. I think that's what we need to do. Like so. Nice joint there. So effectively what the switch does, the switch here, simply breaks this red wire here that used to run along, it breaks the circuit. So it's like cutting the wire in half and the switch just makes and breaks that wire. Door opens, it makes the circuit, the door closes, turns the circuit off. It's just a matter of installing it now. You can use one of these little uh, cable cleat things. Now this flex can simply be tacked to the back to make the wires tidy. I prefer to take a drop of super glue, stick it on the cable and then use some of this stuff to temporarily hold it in place. So I'll demonstrate. Just hold it in place temporarily and then you can glue it down and once it, the glue is down you can remove your blue tag or white tag. It's just a helping hand. In this case, I'll be using a standard phone charger. Any USB phone charger should work. And that can just be plugged into a nearby socket. If you don't have one of those, you can simply use a power bank, which will work just fine. I prefer something that plugs into the mains because that way we don't need to worry about it. It's always charged because I'm lucky right here in my wardrobe there's a power socket already 
power, 5 volts. Cable needs to be glued or tacked in place still. Run there. Here we have our cut in the wire that goes to the switch. The switch then runs up. Here, it interrupts the circuit. Now we need to stick this tap underneath so it illuminates the wardrobe. The LED tape is adhesive backed, so there's a glue. So you simply peel the adhesive off. The LED tape can go. So there you have it, a wardrobe light.